How's it going everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable coins in Canada. Today we're going to be discussing a Canadian dollar coin that can be worth up to $50,000 that you probably had no idea even existed. Because this coin only has a few known examples, its rarity is only exceeded by its value, and even though you probably won't ever find any of these floating out in the wilds of circulation or in your pocket change, crazier things have happened. In this video, we will explore the historical context surrounding the production of this incredibly rare and valuable piece of Canadian currency and delve into why it holds such importance in numismatic history. Additionally, we will discuss any distinguishing and identifying features and significance among collectors and also potential value if you are ever to find a legitimate example. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. And make sure to stay to the end of the video if you would like to find out how to identify this holy grail coin. And then without further ado, what do you say we get right into it and discuss the Canadian 1964 pattern or trial $10. Let's get it guys. Canadian pattern or trial coins stand as unique and distinctive pieces that are crafted by the Canadian Mint as integral components of the coinage development process. These coins play a crucial role in assessing and refining various elements such as the design, metal composition, weight, and durability before the mass production of a new currency or coinage changes. The journey of creating new coinage initiates with the meticulous design phase. Talented artists and engravers collaborate to conceive the initial coin design, which undergoes multiple revisions to meet the artistic, historical, and technical standards set by the Canadian Mint. The Mint will also experiment with different metal compositions, exploring alloy mixes and surface finishes like matte or proof-like. Once the optimal design and metal composition are determined, a limited number of trial coins are minted using specialized equipment. These trial coins then undergo rigorous quality control processes to ensure that they align with the mint's exacting standards. The next phase involves subjecting these coins to comprehensive testing, including assessments of durability and wear resistance, to guarantee their ability to withstand the rigors of circulation. Mint officials and experts meticulously reviewed the trial coins, making any necessary adjustments or modifications. Upon approval, the mint can proceed with the mass production of the finalized coin design, ultimately entering it into general circulation. Encountering Canadian pattern or trial coins in everyday transactions is an exceedingly rare occurrence. These coins are specifically crafted for internal purposes and are often retained by the Canadian Mint for reference, archival collections, or occasionally made available to collectors during special events. The primary enthusiasts seeking these coins include collectors, numismatists, and historians who value them for their unique designs, metal compositions, and also the insights that they provide into the coinage development process. For those curious about the possibility of stumbling upon such coins in your pocket change, it's very important to note that the chances are pretty much slim to nil. However, if a coin appears unusual or deviates from the standard circulation coinage designs, and may be worth having it examined by an expert or professional numismatist as it could potentially be a rare or pattern trial piece. So now that I've given you some context on how these coins come into existence and how incredibly rare they truly are, what do you say we discuss the coin that you are all here to find out about, and that is the 1964 commemorative pattern $10. Now you might be asking why I am referring to this coin as a tin dollar and not a silver dollar, and that is because a few of these holy grail trial coins were produced in a tin composition. It is not uncommon for mints to experiment with metal compositions, and it would seem like they were considering producing the Canadian dollar coins in tin around the year 1964. The reverse of this coin features the typical commemorative Charlottetown, Quebec conference design, but the obverse of this piece is incredibly unique. Instead of bearing the effigy of the reigning monarch, as is the norm for circulating Canadian coinage, the face of the obverse on this pattern piece is almost blank, except for a small strange symbol near the center. 
Now, I wish I could give you guys some more information on the obverse design. I'm not too sure what it represents, but it almost honestly looks like an old Mexican pillar dollar or a counter stamp mark. Either the Canadian Mint was considering the possibility of removing the effigy from the silver dollar or possibly they just use this to differentiate the trial or pattern 1964 tin dollar. Although this coin is not considered a proof strike, the relief on the reverse design for this coin is much higher than in the standard 1964 silver dollar. This factor, along with the unique obverse, sets it apart and adds to its intrigue and allure in the numismatic world. Now some of the details and specifications for this coin, if any of these are off at all, it may indicate that this is not a legitimate example. This 1964 $10 should have a weight of 26.9 grams and a diameter of 35.5 millimeters. The edge of this coin will actually be plain instead of reeded, which would also be a major visual differentiator and sets it apart from the common issue 1964 silver dollars. As I mentioned previously, the reverse should feature the Charlottetown Quebec commemorative conference design with a higher relief than the standard issue and the obverse of this piece should be blank with a small marking or symbol in the center. Usually pattern or trial coins will receive an SP or specimen designation if they were sent off to a reputable grading company such as PCGS or NGC, but there are a few cases like this 1964 $10 where it will actually receive the standard MS grade. Charlton Catalogs classifies this coin as DC-13 and if you were to find one of these and it scored between an MS-63 to MS-64 then it can be worth up to $50,000. There are very few known examples of this coin, with one actually being featured in the National Currency Collection. As is the case with most trial or pattern coins, there are usually only a few made and they are usually disposed of or scooped up pretty quickly by mint employees, but that doesn't mean that you can't find one of these, especially if you are able to find an uncirculated bag or roll of Canadian 1964 silver dollars. It's also a great idea to keep your eyes open on online auctions and sites like eBay as sometimes people can sell things that they don't always know exactly what they have. There is a chance that someone might think that they have a coin with post mint damage and can sell this for near silver melt and if you could pick one of these up and actually identify it as the correct coin you can make a huge profit. Chances are it's probably going to be a counterfeit if you are buying it off an online auction site or off of a site like Wish or Alibaba. But at the same time it is always good to be armed with a little bit of knowledge especially when you are dealing with coins like this 1964 trial or pattern $10. The 1964 Canadian silver dollars are fairly common issues. They make quite a few of them. I've actually owned many of them myself. So this is definitely a good one to keep your eyes out for. And another incredible coin that deserves its place in the annals of Canadian numismatic history. Now, what do you guys think about this 1964 Canadian 10 pattern dollar? What would you ever do if you found a legitimate example? Or if you ever have found any of the coins that I discussed in this video, let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. Also, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. But I think that is pretty much going to do it for this one, folks. So until the next one, everybody, peace out and have a good one, y'all.